Welcome to Biology at Ease. This video is in continuation with my previous video which was on control and coordination. In this video, I will be explaining the human nervous system. So let's first understand what is a nervous system. Nervous system is that organ system of our body which is made up of nerve cells known as neurons that coordinates all the activities of the body which means your thinking actions, behavior, everything is under the control of this system called the nervous system. Neurons are the functional and basic units of the nervous system. They consist of three parts, cell body, dendrites and exon. Cell body is that part of a neuron which contains nucleus and cytoplasm. From the cell body, thin fibers arises. The shorter fibers are known as dendrites, whereas the long fiber is known as exon. Exon is covered with a sheet made up of protein and fat and this sheet is known as myelin sheet and this myelin sheet is protective in nature. Now there are three types of neurons sensory neuron, motor neuron and relay neuron. When your body detects the stimulus with the help of the receptors, from the receptors, the sensory neurons transfers the signal in the form of nerve impulses to the central nervous system which is made up of brain and spinal cord. In the brain and spinal cord, the message in the form of nerve impulse is read and a suitable response is decided. The suitable response again in the form of nerve impulse is carried with the help of motor neurons to the effector. An effector is that part of the body which produces the response. For example, your hand, your muscles as well as your glands, all these are effectors. So motor neurons transfers the signals in the form of nerve impulses from the brain or spinal cord to the effector. An effector finds Finally produces the response. Relay neurons are those neurons which are present inside the central nervous system that is inside brain and spinal cord and these relay neurons helps in connecting the sensory neurons to the motor neurons. Let's quickly revise this thing. Neurons are the basic unit of nervous system which is that organ system of our body which controls all the activities of the body. All the other organ systems of your body are under the control of this nervous system. Now neurons consist of three parts, cell body, dendrites and exon. Cell body is the region of neuron consisting of nucleus and cytoplasm. From the cell body, short and thin fibers arises which are known as dendrites and the long fiber arising from the cell body is known as exon. There are three types of neurons, sensory neuron, motor neuron and relay neuron. Sensory neuron carries the signal in the form of nerve impulses from the receptors to the central nervous system. Motor neurons carries the nerve impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors which finally produces the response and relay neurons are those neurons which connects sensory neuron to the motor neurons. Now what are the function of this cell body, dendrites and exon? When your body detects the stimulus that is when your body detects the change in the environment this stimulus or the energy of the stimulus in the form of nerve impulses is received by the dendrites. These dendrites further transfers the nerve impulses to the cell body. From the cell body, the nerve impulses are transferred to the exon and the exon transfers the nerve impulses to the dendrite of the adjacent neuron. Now let's see how this transfer occurs. This is a flow chart showing the transmission of nerve impulses from the receptors to the CNS and finally to the effective region of the body leading to the production of an appropriate response. Now the receptors present in the sensory organs of your body detects the change in the environment that is they detect the stimulus. Inside the receptors the energy of the stimuli is converted into an electrical energy which is known as nerve impulse. 
this nerve impulse is then carried out by the sensory neurons so all the neurons which carries the nerve impulse to the central nervous system are your sensory neurons so this is your sensory neuron now the message will be accepted by the dendrites of the sensory neuron this dendrite will transfer the nerve impulses to the cell body and from the cell body the nerve impulse will be transferred to the exon region of this neuron at the terminal region of the exon there are small packages which are known as vesicles these vesicles contain chemical substances called as neurotransmitters these neurotransmitters are the chemical substances which will carry the nerve impulses from one neuron to the adjacent neuron now between two neurons that is between the adjacent neurons there is a small gap which is known as synapse so this is the gap which the nerve impulse have to cross in order to reach the central nervous system so neurotransmitters act as the carrier for transferring the nerve impulse from one neuron to the other neuron when the energy of the stimulus in the form of nerve impulse reaches the exon terminal the vesicles present in the exon terminal releases the chemical substance known as neurotransmitter and this neurotransmitter carries the nerve impulses so that they can jump this gap called the synapse similarly this gap will be crossed with the help of neurotransmitters present at the exon terminal of this neuron finally the nerve impulses reaches the central nervous system inside the central nervous system a response is created this response is again in the form of nerve impulses now from the exon terminal of the neurons present inside the central nervous system the response is carried by the neurons of the effector region let's revise the steps the receptors detects the stimuli this stimuli in the form of nerve impulses is received by the neurons present inside the sensory nerves the nerve impulses first reaches the dendrites region of the neurons from the dendrites the nerve impulses are transferred to the cell body finally to the exon at the exon terminal the vesicle on receiving the nerve impulse releases the neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter acts as the carrier and transfers the nerve impulses through the synapse so that the nerve impulses can reach to the adjacent neuron so this is how the neurotransmitters helps in carrying the nerve impulses from one neuron to another neuron finally leading to the production of an appropriate response now let's study the organs of the human nervous system there are three main parts of the human nervous system brain spinal cord and nerves besides these three main organs the human nervous system consists of the sensory organs which includes eyes tongue ears nose and skin now brain is an organ which is located inside a bony structure which is known as skull so this is skull inside which brain is present spinal cord is a thick nerve which is surrounded by a bony structure that is known as backbone so this is your spinal cord which is present inside bony structure called backbone the upper end of the spinal cord is connected to the brain so brain and spinal cord are connected to each other nerves are the fibers or wire like structures which arises from brain and spinal cord the nerves which arises from brain are known as cranial nerves the nerves which arises from the spinal cord are known as spinal nerves brain is located inside the skull which is present in the head region of the body and cranial nerves are the nerves which spreads from the brain to various regions of the head spinal nerves arises from the spinal cord and spread to various organs of the body except the head region because in the head region cranial nerves are present there is one more type of nerve which is known as visceral nerve and visceral nerves connects the internal organs of the body like heart and lungs to the brain and spinal cord there are two parts of the nervous system central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system or cns consists of brain and spinal cord 
Peripheral nervous system is that part of the nervous system which is made up of nerves. So cranial nerves, spinal nerves and the visceral nerves together forms the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. Somatic nervous system is also known as voluntary nervous system. The actions performed by the somatic nervous system are under the direct control of the brain. For example, if I ask you to like my video, it is your wish. If you are really interested in liking the video, you will press the thumbs up button, otherwise you won't. So this action of yours, which is under your control, is a part of somatic nervous system. Whereas while watching this video, your heart is continuously beating and you must have blinked your eyes many times without knowing it. So this action which is not under your control is a part of autonomic nervous system. So there are two types of peripheral nervous system, somatic nervous system which is responsible for all those actions of your body which are under your control. Whereas autonomic nervous system is responsible for all those actions of your body that are not under your control for example pumping of your heart and blinking of your eyes so there are three main parts of the nervous system brain spinal cord and nerves there are three types of nerves cranial nerves which arises from the brain spinal nerves which arises from the spinal cord and visceral nerves which connects the visceral that is internal organs of the body to the brain or spinal cord the parts of the nervous system there are two main parts of the nervous system central nervous system which includes the brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system which includes the three nerves spinal nerves cranial nerves and visceral nerves the peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts the voluntary nervous system which is also known as somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system which is also known as involuntary nervous system now during the actions performed by a body which are not under your control like the blinking of your eyes pumping of your heart a path is followed by the nerves and that path is known as reflex arc and the action performed by the body which does not require thinking and which takes place immediately are known as reflex actions. So what are reflex actions? Reflex actions are all those actions of your body which takes place immediately without thinking. For example, the pulling away of your hand from a hot utensil is a reflex action. And to perform reflex action, the nerves have to follow a certain path. And this path is known as reflex arc. During the process of pulling away of your hand, what happens first? The receptors in your sensory organs detects the heat of the utensil. So this is the stimuli which is the heat from the hot utensil. The neurons present inside the receptors transfers the nerve impulses to the brain and spinal cord that is to the central nervous system. From the central nervous system the response created in the form of nerve impulse is transferred to the effector region and the effector finally produces the response. So this path from the receptors to the effectors finally leading to the response is known as reflex arc. For the production of reflex action, brain is generally not involved because brain requires thinking and reflex action includes only those actions which do not require thinking. So in reflex action, the reflex path involves spinal cord instead of brain. So this is how reflex action occurs with the help of spinal cord. Now let's study the central nervous system in detail. The central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. Brain is located inside the skull of your body. The brain is covered with three membranes which are known as meninges. It includes dura matter, pia matter and arachnoid. So dura matter, pia matter and arachnoid are the meninges or protective membranes of the brain. Now the brain is divided into three parts, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain is further divided into three parts which includes cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. Midbrain does not have any divisions. Hindbrain is divided into pons, cerebellum and medulla. Now let's study the parts of forebrain. Cerebrum 
is the thinking part of the brain. It is responsible for a person's memory, learning, reasoning and a person's personality. Thalamus is that part of the forebrain which is responsible for sensory and motor signaling which means cerebrum regulates the passage of the nerve impulses to and from the brain. Hypothalamus is responsible for regulating the temperature of an individual and it is also responsible for our urge for drinking and eating. Midbrain is that part of the brain which connects forebrain to the hindbrain and midbrain is also responsible for the reflex action of our head and neck in response to auditory and visual stimuli which means for example if someone calls you from back you turn your head in the direction of the voice. So this turning of your head in response to the voice coming from the backward direction is controlled by the midbrain. So that is why we say that midbrain is responsible for the reflex action of your neck and your head in response to voice as well as visual stimuli. Midbrain also controls the size of your pupil and the shape of your eyelids. For example, when you enter a dark room from bright sunlight, the pupil size increases. So this increase in size of the pupil is regulated by the midbrain. Hindbrain consists of pons, cerebellum and medulla. Pons is is responsible for regulating the respiration. Cerebellum maintains your body posture as well as the balance of the body. Medulla is responsible for regulating the involuntary functions of your body. For example, the peristaltic movement of your elementary canal, your breathing rate, your blood pressure and the heartbeat that is the blood circulation of the body. So these are the functions of the brain. Let's quickly revise the parts of the brain. Brain consists of three parts, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. Forebrain consists of cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. Cerebrum is the thinking part of the brain. Thalamus helps in sensory and motor signaling. Hypothalamus regulates your body temperature. Midbrain controls the size of your pupil and the shape of your eyelids, And it is responsible for the reflex action of your head and neck in response to auditory and visual stimuli. Hindbrain consists of pons cerebellum and medulla. Pons regulates respiration. Cerebellum is responsible for maintaining your body posture as well as the balance of your body and medulla regulates various involuntary actions of the body like breathing, blood pressure, heartbeat and the movement of your elementary canal. So this is all about the human nervous system. In my next video we will be studying the endocrine system. I hope you are clear with the content. If you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.